Hi, this is Giants Media and I'm James Williams. Right, so I wanted to talk about uh, skins and borders or borders and skins. I'm not quite sure which way around to put them. Uh, now, uh, you're going to see a series of little clips and they're all related, right? So we're looking, we'll start off with the big thing. We're looking at the solar system. We're looking at the heliosphere and the heliosphere is the extremity of the solar winds generated by our sun and I think it goes out to about three times the orbit of, of uh, Pluto according to what happened to Voyager 2 not so uh, fairly recently when Voyager 2 reached the edge of the uh, the solar system I think Voyager 1 reached the edge of the solar system in in uh, 2012 because it went up vertically to the plane of the ecliptic of the uh, solar system but anyway and what happened was the solar the solar winds became non-existent and that's when uh, it, it's like a barrier, if you know, almost like a barrier by the, the, the force of the solar wind peters out and becomes uh, yeah, sort of dissipated as such. And uh, the cosmic uh, energies take over from that point onwards. But the heliosphere protects the solar system, if you like, from a lot of cosmic rays coming in from elsewhere, from other parts of the, uh, of the galaxy. And then you've got the Earth itself, protective shield that again protects the Earth from a lot of solar energy and some cosmic energy as well that, that gets in past the heliosphere. You know, look at if you look at Mars, it's a barren planet. It's got no strong magnetosphere, but the Earth's got a magnetosphere, uh, it, uh, it, an electromagnetic. And you see there, there's a barrier there that the Earth itself has got. And of course, then there's the atmosphere. That's another barrier because if it wasn't for the atmosphere, every every meteor that ever existed would be raining down on our heads. And a lot of the smaller stuff in particular gets burnt up in the atmosphere. So the atmosphere is a barrier. And you look at uh, you look at a seashore. A seashore is, is a sort of a seashore is a, is a sort of uh, barrier, if you like, between the land and the sea, between a liquid and a solid. Kind of important. All these little barriers are important. And we go even further. You get um, terrain. Uh, you get terrain where people uh, live and they create countries. And the, the, the idea of usually about a country or a state or a tribe, it's usually in tribes, countries are sometimes forced together with different tribes that don't really like each other but have a sort of common interest. But if you look at a, a tribal setup, they have uh, shared beliefs shared values, they have certain um, uh, contributions towards that tribe that they can bring. Not always, but often do. But in a sense, to get into that tribe, to become a member of that tribe is not so easy. You have to marry into it, you have to be accepted very often. And you've got a skin. Your skin is a barrier against the external forces. It, it protects the internal organs. Uh, I mean, the skin itself is the largest organ. A lot of people don't realise that. Uh, but the skin protects the, the organs from uh, infections and from dirt and everything else. Uh, sun rays, uh, it keeps you reasonable, uh, degree, it keeps the temperature regulated of the body. It's important. And you go into the structure of the, the like blood cells have got a, 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 a well, I didn't say a sphere because they're sort of squidgy things, aren't they? But they have a barrier around them. And when cells get infected, it's because some virus has penetrated into the uh, cell and, and starts replicating itself and causing problems before it spreads to other, other cells and makes you feel really ill. So all these things, when you look at them, everywhere you go and within the body, the body's got loads of different sort of barriers. I mean, the heart is, is distinctive. The liver is distinctive. They've all got their own sort of little realms where they all function nicely within that package of things and have to deal with uh, what well, they obviously have to take in nutrients from outside. But they also have to deal with attacks through, uh, you know, disease and viruses, as I've already mentioned. So coming to the how does that affect us in society? Well, in society, there are people who want to have open borders, to throw open the open borders. We'll have no borders, so everyone can go wherever they want to go, which is sounds great. But in terms of function, in terms of creating uh, like wealth, providing food, services, transport, 
you know, uh, catering for a population within within a border, within a, a, a you know a, a country's border or whatever it may be. You know, even within a country, like you can have different counties and they'll have different ec economic structures and they'll have boundaries where they're responsible for what's within their boundaries. All those are natural. They're natural to existence, not just natural to humans. They're natural to existence. And it's imp they are Im they're, they're important because if you break down the barriers of everything, everything you if you start breaking down barriers, if we got rid of our magnetosphere, we'd be like Mars. You know, if our sun suddenly stopped uh, throwing out uh, solar winds, it would obviously not have to be there. It wouldn't be there. It wouldn't be able to do whatever it does. We'd all be frozen within about, uh, you know, two months. We'll all be frozen to death. And that would be the end of us. So everywhere you look, barriers and skins and borders are natural. They're natural, existent, they're natural to existence and important for existence. To throw open borders is recklessly playing with properties that you don't really understand. Nobody understands. And uh, it's, it's extremely dangerous to do that. It, you know, a cell that loses its, uh, it, its skin becomes disrupted. It's destroyed. It's, it's the end of it. And, you know, you end up with horrible disease like Ebola and things like that. And that's like the symptoms of it. So... Those people who are trying to press for open borders, thinking we're all one brotherhood and whatever. No, we're not. Most of us are very different to each other. You get a group of people, you can see within humans anyway, they have trouble. You know, you take about 20 people and there will already be divisions between individuals who don't like each other that much or, or are favourite towards others. You know, this, this is part of it. You can't expect... Uh, hom homogeneity within a populace which is in a state of constant flux you've got to have borders and some kind of uh, control otherwise you can't organize yourselves properly you end up losing everything that's the important th that's what I'm trying to say you know it's not a case of being racist or xenophobic that's a load of garbage that is a load of mumbo jumbo garbage it's reality, you know, because people want to protect their borders does not make them xenophobic. It does not make them racist. That is a false claim. And it's and look what Lenin did. Six million Ukrainians starved to death. The gulag set up wasn't all Stalin's fault. Stalin was a nasty piece of work. But Lenin was responsible for the ideology that created that. And he wanted that as well. If you ever get a chance, there's, an, there's a really old uh, recording of the philosopher Bertrand Russell, who, uh, I don't know, he died in the 19... I don't know when he died. He was, he'd met Lenin. He'd met Lenin had been, and he'd been unimpressed by him. And he was kind of left disturbed when, when uh, Lenin talked about the uh, you know, killing off uh, farmers who'd managed to gain properties and that and laughed in an insane way you know so when you're talking about racism when you talk about xenophobia when you're talking about oh we want open borders it, those sort of people that pushed for that kind of thing were not that nice of people and I would I would suggest that anyone wants to go beyond what they've been told then start opening your eyes and start looking at really what goes on, what really goes on and what is it means. And before you start throwing pejorative terms around, you look at yourself first, first to see where you stand about it. Because it seems to me that those people who throw these terms like racism and xenophobia are pretty nasty people. They're pretty nasty people themselves. And they have a degree of racism in them, I think, already. And they try to transfer it onto others. Oh well, until next time, thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves.